So good morning. Uh, my talk within the next 15 minutes or whatever left is to discuss elderly AML. That remains a big challenge for all uh, oncologists, leukemia expert. Despite all progress done, still the outcome is very uh, poor in this disease. These are from our database at MD Anderson throughout the years, over the last 50 years or 40 years. Well, we have a p-value significant. We're very excited. But if you look at the numbers, survival went from one month to seven months. It's not great at all, and these are for 60 years and older. So 60, I mean, we're all going to live to 90 or 100, so 60 are young patients today, and it's, the outcome is still very poor. If you move forward to the 70 years old, still no progress made whatsoever. Uh, you treat them for whatever treatment you give them, 3 plus 7 or hypometrating agents, nothing works for them. They progress, they die. They cannot tolerate well for treatment. So what's going on? These are the data we have. We analyze CR rate and uh, overall survival uh, by age uh, group. As you can see, the CR rate is higher for those who are below 60 years old. It goes from 70% to 40% when, you, when uh, patients are older. And same story for as well for survival. They do poorly, as I showed you. So why these patients don't do well with the treatment? Well, first of all, they are 70 years old. They have bad organs. They have comorbidities. They have poor tolerance to chemotherapy. So intensive chemotherapy is not an option to be offered for them. High dose RSE, not, not question. 3 plus 7 is not a good option for them as well. Now, that being said, that doesn't explain uh, the whole picture. It has to do with the disease, with the biology of the disease. These patients may have different disease than what observed among young population. They have more AML evolving from MDS. They have more resistant uh, disease. They have more mutations and more uh, abnormalities in their karyotype, and that may explain why they don't do so well. So therefore, in your practice, when you have somebody coming to see you 70 years old and coming with their family, and they did their search before coming to see you, it's what they do at MD Anderson, Okay, how we advise them, how to treat them. Do we offer them T plus 7 or high-dose chemotherapy, or we go for something investigational? Because, as you know, besides low-dose RSE for these patients, there's nothing approved in the U.S. Low-dose RSE and holy water, that's it. Now, we did a study where we assessed for factors that can predict for outcome. Age remains a major factor. Above 7 years old, they don't do well. And favorable karyotype, bad performance status. They had MDS before and they evolved into AML very poor, and they have renal failure, and RB supportive care plays a major role for these patients. So therefore, you will have a scoring system where you can predict early mortality and long-term outcome. Early mortality means mortality within eight weeks, 10% or below. I mean, if you have a higher rate of mortality, forget about intensive chemotherapy, this patient should get another alternative. So what else do we have? If we cannot offer them chemotherapy, if we cannot offer them 3 plus 7 or high dose RSE, and by the way, we don't use 3 plus 7 at MD Anderson, not because being arrogant, but because the studies have shown high dose RSE is better. No, among these patients, high dose RSE will not be an option. Studies were done with essentially using hypomethylating agents, leading to an objective response rate of 40 to 50 percent, CR rate being 10 percent. No, but what these agents offer to the patient, they lower the mortality early on. They are not toxic, and these patients will not die early on within eight weeks of treatment. So azacitidine was approved for MDS, and there was a randomized trial published by Dr. Feno in Lancet Oncology, where patients were randomized between azacitidine or best supportive care or best conventional care regimen. This study did include MDS patient up to 30%. So the study was positive and did improve overall survival. And mainly if you look at the patient in whom blasts above 20%, this is AML by WHO, they still do better than uh, uh, chemotherapy with a better survival going from 24 months to 16 months. Obviously, you're lowering the mortality rate. Similar studies was done in Europe, sponsored by URTC, where patients were randomized between decitabine, another hypometrating agent, and chemotherapy, or best available approach. Again, decitabine was better. No, here there was no survival improvement, and that was mainly due to the regimen given. Decitabine was given at 15 milligram per meter square IV three times a day for three days. We know that is not an optimal regimen, and 20 milligram per meter square was used. That led to a randomized trial uh, 
published in JCO, where patients were randomized AML unfit for chemotherapy between decitabine 20 mg per meter square daily for five days or best supportive care, among them low dose RSC given. This is the design of the trial. Patients were unfit for chemotherapy. They were randomized one-to-one -one between the two arms. And the primary endpoint was the oval survival. The first cutoff was uh, at 400 deaths. At that time, there was no p-value significant. And therefore, the FDA did not approve the cytabine for, for these patients. Now, with a longer follow-up, there was an improvement. Here, the first cutoff between the cytabine and the, support, the other arm. Again, a better survival, median eight months versus five months. These are the response rate. The cytabine did induce a CR, CRP of 18% better than the other alternative. Low-dose cytarabine is the only standard available in the U.S., so for randomized trial, we use low-dose RSE as a standard uh, approach. With a longer follow-up, with more deaths observed, the survival was significant, 7.7 versus 5 months. Not huge, but p-value is significant. Based on this data, the drug is approved in Europe for AML. It's the first drug approved for AML frontline for candidates who are unfit for chemotherapy, 20 milligram per meter square daily for five days. Again, uh, here they're showing the, uh, the, the factors uh, favoring the cytabine across the board. Uh, the cytabine was better than uh, the, support, the conventional care or low-dose RSE. Can we do better? Can we improve these results? One way to go is to combine IMID uh, plus azocytidine. We and others have done several studies assessing this combination. These are in patients with DEL5 uh, abnormalities. There are some response rates, 43%, although Toxicity is still quite high, and we need to tune the dose of revlimid or, or lenalidomide. What is the best regimen to be given that is still uh, underway? Okay, adding what we call histone deacetylase inhibitor. Several studies have assessed the combination of decitabine or azacitidine plus or minus histone deacetylase inhibitor. In this study report at the last ASH meeting using viproic acid. So far, the studies have been negative, no improvement in outcome by adding a histone deacetylase inhibitor. Maybe we're not using the right one. Several are being assessed. Among them, uh, one recent one, Prasinostat, is being assessed as well and seems to be the most potent histone deacetylase inhibitor. So far, short answer, adding hypomethylating agents to histone deacetylase inhibitor did not improve the outcome. So what else do we have for these patients? Clofarabine, the nucleus analog approved for pediatric ALL. This, study, this agent has activity in myeloid disorders, and therefore this drug was assessed in uh, AML setting. Dr. Combo went over the studies uh, in relapse setting. Here we use 30 milligrams per meter square daily for five days in patients who are unfit for chemotherapy. Again, responses were observed at 46%, and the median survival is 10 months. The good thing about this regimen, we have not seen an increase of the early mortality, still 10% or below at four weeks. This is the median survival, 41 weeks or 10 months. So using this drug, we tried to build on it, adding low-dose RSC and adding hypomethylating agents. So patients will get clofarabine, low-dose RSC as induction. The dose are here, and I will leave you my slide. And when they go into remission, they can pursue the consolidation with the same regimen at a lower dose, alternating with the cytabine. In our hands, this is the best induction regimen we ever had for elderly patients. 58% CR rate, objective response rate was 66%. We did not have, or we have not observed, significant increase of the mortality early on. The regimen was very safe, very well tolerable, and responses were better than any other regimen we had. Median survival for patients who are responding has not been reached. For not responding patients, all patients, the median survival is 13 months. Keep in mind, clofarabine single age was 10 months, 13 months. Again, these are phase two uh, single arm studies, but very encouraging. Now, what we're doing right now, we're replacing clofarabine with uh, cladribine, the same family. It's more available and cheaper, uh, so uh, hoping to reproduce the same results and eventually uh, be more used uh, among patients with elderly AML. So how this chemotherapy, clofarabine, plus or minus to RSC compared to more intensive chemotherapy, again, not used very often among patients with elderly AML. CR rate, 58%. However, what we're seeing is better survival and way lower early mortality. The treatment is safe and not toxic for this patient population. 
where we're going from here. We're using uh, FLITRI inhibitors. Uh, you've seen uh, some data before about FLITRI mutated offer uh, confers a bad prognosis for this patient. One of the agents being used is quizartinib. Uh, phase uh, one, two studies were run, single agent, and now the study, the, this drug is being used in combination with chemotherapy or hypomethylating agents. Uh, in the recent ASH meeting, Jorge Cortez did uh, present the data on a lower dose uh, schedule, and again, at a lower dose, we do see same efficacy, although we see less uh, safety concern with QT prolongation, and that is promising. Again, this agent is being used uh, right now in combination with chemotherapy and hypometering agents. Where are we going from here? SGI-110 was a breakthrough. I mean, it's a breakthrough therapy for AML, but the data was presented by Dr. Kentarjan at the last ASH meeting. The cytopene is rapidly eliminated by cytidine deaminase, and therefore limit, that limits the exposure to the cancer cells to the drug. If we can modify the formation of the cytopene to expand the exposure, that may lead to better result, and that was the rationale behind, behind uh, SGI-110. Patient with refractory, ref relapsed refractory AML or unfit for other chemotherapy were randomized to two arms, either using the most active biologically dose, 60 mg per meter square daily for five days, or the MTD dose, 90 mg per meter square daily for five days, the primary endpoint being overall uh, remission rate. Secondary endpoint were safety and duration of remission as survival as well. Here the responses, they are comparable between the two arms. 60 mg per square, either dose essentially being used forward with future clinical trials, with the response rate, CR, CRP, and uh, CRI being around 25 to 30%. Keep in mind, these patients, they failed other chemotherapy, most of them. So it's very promising, as gi one zero can be safely administered, uh, sub-Q given. Uh, side effects were mainly not significant or not clinically relevant. We're using 60 mg per meter square daily for five days, and this treatment, this drug has shown activity in relapsed refractory patient and in treatment naive, and there's a good correlation with the hypomethylation uh, profile as well. This drug is being assessed single age or in combination in elderly AML and MDS as well. What else we have, uh, what we're doing is, uh, I had in yellow trials ongoing right now, essentially with Vosaroxin and 5 azacitidine in other AML. We're replacing clofarabine with 2CDA plus azacitidine. Oral azacitidine is being assessed as well in AML. And uh, quizartinib, a platelet inhibitor plus or minus chemotherapy. Thank you very much for your attention. Happy to take any questions.